Well, Emma, I think we can say that this was unashamedly radical. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn wants to preside over a major expansion of the role of the state and deliver arguably the largest nationalisation programme since the Second World War. So let's just take a look here. What does Labour want to take into public ownership? They are energy supply, Royal Mail, the water industry, the railways and the bus networks, and let's not forget uh, broadband. And truly, it is an end to austerity, because look at this. If Jeremy Corbyn becomes Prime Minister, there will be an immediate 5% pay increase for all public sector workers, and then after that, there'll be a year-on-year -year increase in pay, at least in line with inflation. Now, just to get a taste of how radical Labour wants to be, what they want to do is increase day-to-day -day government spending by 10% above what the current government is planning to do. Now, how are they going to pay for that? Take a look at this. They will say that taxes will increase by 82.9 billion a year. That's their plan to do that by 2023-2024. They say that that will be mostly paid for uh, by business. They'll bear most of the burden of that. And just look at that, what they offered in 2017, 48.6 billion. So it's, uh, it's quite, a, quite a move uh, uh, from the last manifesto. Now, that is all very radical, but there were a few areas of timidity. So look at this. You'll remember at the Labour Party conference, uh, the party voted in favour of taking private schools under state control. Well, what have they said today? Well, they're going to take some action. They're going to close what they call tax loopholes that are benefiting private schools. But on that point about taking private schools into state control, well, that's out to consultation. There was also another big vote at the Labour conference, which was to guarantee free movement. Well, what does the manifesto say on that? Well, yes to free movement if we remain in the EU, but if we leave, well, that will be up to negotiation. So as you were saying, Emma, I was at uh, the launch of that Labour manifesto where I came across some rather happy members of the Shadow Cabinet. Shami Chakrabarti, what did you think of that? I thought it was wonderful. I'm really, really excited about this manifesto. I was so proud to vote for it at the Clause 5 meeting. Incredibly moving occasion, as was today. Really Being excited. sold as radical. Yeah. Is this a rupture not just with the Conservative approach, but also with the new Labour approach? It's not, it's, not, it's not a rupture, it's an evolution in the right direction. Diane Abbott. Yeah. Diane Abbott, what did you think of that? Oh, I thought that was fantastic. That was a speech of the next Prime Minister of this country. John Ashworth. Hello, Nick. Hello, how are you? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm all right. What did you think of that? Well, we, this is a manifesto that's going to rescue the NHS. When you've got, I mean, you've seen the waiting list. You've got people languishing on trolleys for hours and hours. It's heartbreaking what's happened in the NHS, isn't it? Under after a decade now of cuts. John, 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 this is obviously, this is obviously a rupture from the Conservative approach, but is it also a rupture from the New Labour approach? Or are you building on New Labour, talking about I think what we've achieved? I think we're building on the whole history of the Labour Party, and that includes New Labour. Don't underestimate what Gordon Brown did in putting money into tackling child poverty in this country, that the Tories have reversed. Don't underestimate what Tony Blair did in terms of investment in education. Don't underestimate what past Labour governments have done for building what Harold Wilson called the white heat and technological revolution. That's what we're building on here. It's, a, it's a directly in the history of Labour when we, in government, we're on the side of the people. But they were always worried about frightening the horses. Are you not frightened of frightening the horses? No, because we're giving people assurances. First of all, 95% of the people will not pay any more income tax, VAT or national insurance. Yes, we are increasing the income tax on the top 5%. And do you know, I've been meeting quite a lot of them. And they're actually saying, actually, I do pay my taxes and I'm proud of it. I don't want to be stepping over homeless people in the street when I come out to my office. I want safety on the streets as well. I want a decent education for all our kids. So actually, we're bringing the country together again. But we are saying to the rich and corporations, you will pay your taxes. I'm joined now by Barry Gardner, the Shadow International Trade Secretary. Uh, good evening. Jeremy Corbyn has described this manifesto as radical. Yet you appear to have bottled it in some key policies. Why have you not pledged to outlaw private schools? Um, look, the Tories have turned this country into a laughing stock. Um, we have pensioners 
waiting for seven hours on hospital trolleys. We've got kids being sent home from school with begging letters. We've got food banks being used by our kids, four million of them in poverty. We need to do something absolutely radical, and today we did. But, sorry, I'm just going to go through some of the things that had been agreed at your conference. And you say you're a Democratic Party, and people who'd been at that conference, members of the Labour Party, may be confused. You pledged, as a party, to fully in integrate the independent school sector into the state sector and redistribute the money. Why is that not in your manifesto, Mr Gardner? Well, I think if you look on page 40 of the manifesto, Emma, you'll find that it is. What we've said there very clearly is that the current subsidies that go to independent schools, the subsidies of, of not having to pay VAT because they register as charities when in fact they're businesses, um, they will go. We're going to do that. Um, what we are also going to do is look at how to integrate schools into the comprehensive system. All that's there. It's page no, 40. I think it's, sorry, it's a consultation. Two. You've downgraded it. You said at conference you were going to get rid of private schools. You've put it out to consultation and you've closed some loopholes financially. Private schools will still be going strong under a Labour government. Why did you bottle it? Well, I, I don't consider it bottling it. I, I consider that what we're doing is a very sensible way forward. But if you look at what education has become uh, under the Tories, the, the complete lack of funds that, that schools are facing now, if you look at the, the abandoning of the educational maintenance allowance that the previous Labour government had, uh, if you look at the way in which they tripled student fees, all of this is the damage that the Conservatives but, have done to Mr. our Gardner, education system. Mr Gardner, you're in a process of renationalising. We, we want to amend that. You are in a process of renationalising rail, mail, water and energy. This is your opportunity to do it with schools. You haven't taken it, you've farmed it out to consultation. If I go to a different area of green uh, here, you've also watered down your green uh, credentials. Well, uh, if, no, no, if sorry, I can, if I could just if, say if, this. If, if, there was if, a hard if, and fast target well, there at conference. If you conference. let me answer one question... There was a hard and fast target you at your conference. one question before I move on to the next, then... then what you were saying about, uh, about schools, it's not a matter of bottling it, it's a matter of doing these things progressively. You can't just close down institutions that are dealing with our children's future overnight. So it's a sensible way forward. Now, as to your second question. Well, I hadn't finished the second question, I will say that, but it is not I who said that, it is you at your conference that put that forward about schools, and that's what went through at your conference, and you say what happens at your conference is what your party pledges to deliver. I I'm only going off the party's words. Uh, your green no, what, credentials. What we pledged, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, what we sorry pledged... To move on to the green credentials, you asked for that second question. There's now no hard and fast target. It went from again at your conference to be carbon neutral in this country at 2030. Now it's on track. I quote your manifesto for the 2030s. Uh, in fact, if you quote the manifesto, I think what you'll find is we've said that the overwhelming reduction in our uh, in carbon emissions will have taken place by 2030 um, and that we are planning to go to net zero um, as soon as possible thereafter. Now that is the most radical manifesto commitment from any government anywhere in the world on uh, the New Green Deal. It's an extraordinary commitment that we've made and what we're doing is responsibly ensuring that we can do it uh, knowing that it's a just transition for those workers who are, who are currently working in the old fossil fuel industries um, making sure that they have the retraining and the skills that they need to have good new jobs uh, in the new industries. Okay. And also through the apprenticeship levy, the climate apprenticeships, yes. making sure that our young people are skilled up to be able to deliver that. Again, you can't do these things overnight because well, you need the skills base again, in order to do again, it. Again, I put and that's it to what you. We're creating I'm, in this manifesto. I, I'm sorry, I put it to you. I'm getting my information from the Labour Party and the way that you say you run the Labour Party. You've also gone differently in a different direction on your immigration policy. If I now take my lead from the Shadow Home Secretary, who only a week ago, Diane Abbott, I quote, said the Labour Party was committed to maintaining and extending, extending the key word, freedom of movement in terms of immigration. Yes, the, there is no mention of extension. extension. Was she out of the loop? 
No, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't think that's correct. I think we have talked about extending freedom of movement. That's actually for people uh, who are uh, EU citizens living in this country and, 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 and those uh, uh, living in the EU. Um, so we're talking about extending those rights, making sure that anybody who came here when we were a member of the EU has extended those rights. Uh, obviously, we don't know at this point whether we will be um, leaving uh, the European Union or not, and therefore we're open as to what would happen thereafter. Well, uh, David Blunkett, the former Home Secretary this way, so I mean, this I, week did say that the Labour Party had to stop looking in two different directions on the policy of immigration. And you have a shadow Home Secretary saying you're going to actively extend the number of immigrants coming to this country. And then we have a Labour Party manifesto that simply says, well, we don't know what's happening because of Brexit. It doesn't provide much clarity for voters. No, 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 no sorry. Look, we, we, we've always been very clear that um, we'll not set arbitrary immigration targets because we believe that's the wrong thing to do for our economy. Um, if you want to uh, have a thriving economy, then you need to adjust the net migration figures into your country to support the skills and the jobs that you need to have that thriving economy. Okay, so well, immigration will go up, it will go down, but it will do so in accordance with the needs of the economy, not as the Conservatives have tried to do it by fixing arbitrary immigration targets and then letting your economy suffer as a result. 100,000 vacancies in our health service at the moment. Let, That's let me not ask what we you, want. Let me ask we you want a very to be investing question. in our health service, but that means the skills as well, okay. the 43,000 nurses that we need in our health service. If I could ask you a very straight question. We now know how the Labour Party plans to help future students. There will be no tuition fees, therefore no debt. Will you clear yeah. the debt of those students who have been charged already to go to university mm -hmm. if you get office? Look, it's a tough question, it is. Um, and, and let me just say this, that uh, at the moment, the government in its last uh, fiscal statement earlier this year actually had to admit that it was going to uh, have to write off a, a very large proportion of that debt. It was simply not being paid. Um, and this should have reflected, been reflected in, in the budget that was cancelled in November by the government. Now, we're going to have to look at this very carefully to see what we can do. But what is clear... Is that an a answer? large part of Please, this could I money get an is? You, you, you are no, Emma. You are getting an answer. Well, you, you're saying you, you're, going you're to not look getting at a it. simple answer. Uh, what, what I'm, what I'm saying to you is that already a large part of this debt is not being paid off, and therefore the government is not getting the benefit of it. Um, and we will need to take that into account when we look at what we can do for those students who, were, who had those fees imposed upon them by the Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives when they were in coalition with each other in, in 20, so you, the, the 2010 The answer is you don't know. You're going to look at it. That's the answer. You don't know if you'll write off that debt. That's a, that's a very fair you know, reflection I, of what you just I, said. I, I, you, uh, it, of course it is, because it's not a commitment that we've been able to make in the manifesto. It's not something that we've been able to cost, because the Conservatives have not produced the budget figures, which would have been in the, in the November budget. But, but above all, you're uh, rather, it seems to me, extraordinarily accusing us of a lack of ambition when in your opening piece, uh, Nick Watt was saying that this was one of the most ambitious uh, programs of uh, public investment that this country's ever uh, seen. Uh, Mr Gardner, uh, at, no it is, at no point did because the words... We need that. Uh, sorry, at no point, just to, not to be misquoted myself, did I accuse you of a lack of ambition. I talked about it not being perhaps as radical as some of your own members may have hoped for on your schools, <laughs> yeah. on your green, yeah. and with regards to clarity over that student debt, and also looking at what you're going to be doing around immigration when one member of the Shadow Cabinet has said something different than what seems to be in the manifesto. I'm merely trying to get clarity. Now we do have a manifesto. The manifesto is the clarity. That's the mistake you're making. You see, what policy, uh, what, what conference does is it sets policy. And, for example, on the green policy, you'll be aware, or you should be, that, in fact, there were two separate, different policies that were passed on, on, uh, uh, on, our, green man, uh, on our green policies at, at party conference uh, that, that didn't actually agree with each other. But the manifesto is the definitive commitment that we have made to transform the lives of people in this country, to bring real change change and real hope to people Mr. who are Gardner. desperately struggling. Mr Gardner, I have to call time there. I, I do thank you very much, though. We all do for your time this evening.